Hello guys and gals and welcome! Uh, so today we're going to be talking about an interesting topic, one that uh, you might find uh, fascinating, and that is uh, conversion. Is it really an s rank skill in disguise? Alright, so when we talk about conversion, um, a lot of people think, and I also, for the longest time, a lot of conversion was probably one of the worst abilities in the game. And um, I don't think that's the case anymore. I feel like conversion is actually a surprisingly good skill, but um, only in the right hands. Um, and if we go over it today, we're going to talk about this, um, is that conversion is only as good as its user, um, very specifically. So if you have a user who sucks at using conversion, then conversion becomes a garbage skill. Garbage user, garbage conversion. Skillful user, amazing conversion. So forth and so on. Now there's a lot of conversion tactics that you can potentially use, and the one, the most important skill that you really have to keep in mind is that, um, well, it's just, you don't really want to use it if you don't have to or need to use it. In fact, uh, con the most important thing about conversion is just simply knowing when not to use it. Um, and, uh, and I think a lot of people fail at this because they might just get conversion happy and just start converting everything, um, especially when it is not needed. So if you're in a group and the group is killing things relatively quickly, then you don't really need to do this. Um, especially if you have a solid tank and if the kills are going relatively fast. Um, in general, conversion can actually slow things down tremendously. The Shadow Master is probably the classic example of this because the Shadow Master has been known to not only save entire groups, but also to slow down entire groups for very long periods of time. Um, and this has to do with the fact that the Shadow Master can both obviously convert monsters at the wrong time and also convert monsters at the right time. Say converting a monster and creating a tank at the right moment to save the entire group from certain death, or potentially just simply converting a monster during the bail runs and causing the entire bail runs to slow down because of it. Um, so knowing when to use and when not to use conversion is also very, very important. Um, now there's a lot of various tactics that you can use for conversion. Um, one of course is to use thorns, which I am using on my mercenary right now. But, um, basically what we're going to do is we're going to go over some of these conversion tactics and, uh, we're going to talk about them in, in, in sequence. So the first one, um, is what I like to call elite assassination. And it basically just has to do with the fact that, well, if you're in a situation where you have an elite monster, especially a particularly testy elite monster, like for instance, say, I don't know, let's say like a, a extra strong, might enchanted, extra fast monster or something like that, and you find yourself in a situation where, you know, you would rather prefer that monster not exist. Um, what you can do is you can do what's called a uh, elite extermination, which is basically where you go through the process of converting all of the monsters. And the reason why you want to do all of them and you want to make sure that you've got all of them converted is because you want all of them attacking the elite. And as you can see, um, we successfully were able to perform uh, what I would call an elite assassination relatively quickly. We converted all the monsters. All the monsters then proceeded to attack the main force. We enhanced the damage of the monsters by using our auras and also threw in some thorns auras and things like that. And by beefing up the army, we were able to basically completely annihilate the elite. Now, that, of course, that leaves all the rest of the monsters still intact, and we can go through the process of killing those relatively easily. Because once you take out the might aura or the you know, fanaticism aura or or maybe the conviction aura that the monster is running, you don't really have to worry about them all that much. Now, Thorns itself works very well with conviction, um, and um, one of the main issues with Thorns is that, well, it doesn't really work versus, like, ranged monsters, uh, spell casters. Um, and so when you fight a group of ranged monsters like this, um, which I can actually kill relatively easily at this point with this particular character, um, but... We got a, a, a rare man catcher. That's neat. Um, when you're fighting uh, packs of ranged monsters, generally what you want to do is you want to focus your conversions on the monsters that are going to give you the greatest benefits. And what I mean by this is you put yourself in a situation where... And let's see if we can find a nice situation where there are, of course, ranged monsters and melee monsters at the same time. I think Kenya the Magi usually has a nice mix of both. 
Yeah, so here we go. So we've got some nice little uh, spear cats. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to convert all of the spear cats. Now, the reason why we convert the spear cats first is because we want the melee monsters to go and attack the spear cats directly. Um, this allows us to have the melees kill the ranged or kill the spellcasters um, in most situations. And then once that happens, the ranged monsters usually focus on killing the melees. The thorns, um, and of course this is extremely loud. Let me see if I can uh, turn this down for a second. Um, so the thorns um, doesn't work on melee, on, on ranged or spellcasters. Um, however, if you have the melee run up to the thorns, the, the ranged or melee, uh, ranged or spellcaster, what happens is, is you create a situation where the melee is forced to attack the ranged character because now you've created a, a, a situation where the enemy, right, is the ranged monster. So you put the ranged monster into harm's way. You notice that the melee monsters will now run up to the ranged monster, killing themselves on the thorns and hopefully helping you kill that ranged monster in the process. This guy is literally almost dead. As you can see, he took out all of the melee monsters in the process, and then literally as soon as he deconverted, was instantly shattered, which is exactly what we're looking for. So in basically every situation that counts, um, you generally want to prioritize the ranged monsters or the spellcasters over the melees because you want the melees to be attacking the spellcasters directly. You don't want the spellcasters to be hanging back attacking, you know, the regular monsters. You want the melees to go kill the ranged spellcasters. So that's just one of the many tactics you can use, which is always making sure that you convert the ranged and spellcasters first over everything else. Um, another tactic is just simply creating a tank. This is um, a very simple tactic, and it basically just involves you creating a monster that is going to tank for you. And the beauty of this particular um, ability and the way that conversion works is that conversion will actually create a monster basically around the same level as the other monsters that you converted. I believe there actually is a formula. If I go to the Amazon Basin conversion page... Um, there is a formula on here, and the formula basically says uh, converted monsters capable of spawning. Okay, uh, da, 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 da. when C level is less than M level, C level is used to calculate and convert defense attack rating and damage, but life is still calculated using M level. When C level is greater than M level, M level continues to be used to calculate it for all level adjusted stats. So basically, if you're a really low level character and you convert a monster, it does um, ruin the monster's defense and attack rating and damage, but the life of the monster still remains the same as when the monster's original M level was, which basically means that you end up with a tank equivalent, essentially, to the monsters that were converted, no matter what your level is. So even if you're a relatively low level monster uh, character, like for instance, like say you're like a level 30 paladin and you're um, trying to do nightmare cows, which is something that we've done many times on our runs. Converting a monster allows you to create a tank. Um, you will have that tank taking on um, the monsters for you. Now, creating a tank can be either extremely useful or extremely useless, depending on what's going on. So if you have a lot of damage coming in, um, you might find that that tank dies relatively quickly. Um, and basically what you have to do is usually you have to stagger your tanks. So you want one tank, and then you're going to one, two, three, four, and then a second tank, and then one, two, three, four, and then a third tank, and so forth and so on. And the reason why you stagger it is because, you, well, number one, you don't really want them all to deconvert at the same time. Um, this is a big issue because if they all deconvert at the same time, then they're all going to attack you at the same time, which could lead to a devastating result. If you stagger them the way that I did, what you'll notice is, is for the most part, they tend to attack each other as they deconvert, killing each other in order. It actually works surprisingly well, as you just saw there, is that they literally just keep deconverting themselves um, in the right order, and they keep fighting each other in that time period. Now, what this also does is it allows you the ability to make sure that you are deconverting them um, as they deconvert, you have the chance to reconvert and re-up the army. In other words, you got one, two, three, four, and you can convert. Of course, now we have none left. Now, this is usually the situation you want to avoid, which is where you have none converted. But as you can see, they, I staggered them enough that it really wasn't such a big issue. Now we have the Lester Adar dying at basically the same time as the rest. 
Um, retrieving your body while naked. So this is a rather interesting one that has to do with the fact that conversion works independent of having a weapon equipped and also doesn't really require you to have, well, attack rating or even hit the target. Um, for the most part, when it comes to conversion, not only do you not need to actually have any equipment on, but you can generally convert things uh, relatively easily to recover your corpse. Um, for instance, like say I died in the Black Marsh somewhere, um, I could easily get my corpse back even while naked by just simply converting the monsters around my corpse, forcing them into combat with each other, um, and in the process, I can now kill relatively large packs of monsters with relative ease. As you can see, I just downed an elite right here just by converting monsters, um, which takes me to another um, important point. So when you are dealing with monsters that heal or monsters that spawn other monsters, um, and this is very important. So as you were dealing with monsters that tend to be rather snarky in their existence, like maybe you have maggots um, or you have um, the uh, flesh spawners, or maybe you're fighting the shamans in, uh, you know, that resurrect in the Cold Plains. Well, if you're a lower level character or if you're a higher level character, it really doesn't matter. If you can kill them quickly, obviously it's best for them to be dead. If you cannot kill them quickly, then one of the best things that you can do with the shamans is convert them first. Um, the reason why is because when you convert a shaman, he can no longer obviously resurrect anything. He can't resurrect um, even converted minions. Um, so the thing about converting the shaman is that by converting the shaman, you will stop any resurrection instantaneously for the duration of the convert, which is, of course, 16 seconds. And 16 seconds is honestly plenty of time for you to deal with most of his minions in the process. And I was hoping there would be some shamans here, but it looks like I got zero shamans. What is this? A zero shaman stony field? That's okay. Cold Plains usually has shamans. Let's go to Cold Plains. Now, of course, if you're extremely powerful and you can just murder the monsters, you don't necessarily need to use your big old, you know, your conversion ability at all, really. Look at these Power Rangers right here. Freaking Power Rangers. Um, and speaking of Power Rangers, so the conversion ability does not work on elites. It does not work on champions. Um, and it does not work on bosses. Uh, there are also some very specific monsters in the game that it doesn't work on. So you have to be aware of those specific types of monsters, like Oblivion Knights and uh, Listerine the Tormentor, that it doesn't work on. Um, and, of course, we ended up with another area with no shamans. Oh, here we go. Okay. So if you get into an area with a bunch of shamans, generally you just want to convert the shamans. Uh, just convert the shamans. The monsters will kill the shamans for you. Um, it's not even really that big of a deal. Once the shamans are dead, uh, obviously everything else goes along with it. Um, you can just convert one or two monsters in sequence. Make sure the shamans are all nice and toasty dead. Um, if they're not dead by the time the conversion runs out, hopefully you've killed just about everything in the process uh, before they have a chance to come back. Now, this doesn't just work for shamans. It also works very well for other monster types. Uh, like, for instance, when you're in the uh, maggot layer and you're fighting maggots, converting the big maggots will prevent them from laying eggs. Um, also, if you are in, say, um, Act 4 or other areas that have flesh spawners, because there are more than, than that, but if you encounter flesh spawners, which... Uh, so we got one, two, we didn't get flesh spawners, did we? I got tainted, we got corpse. So there's always three types in every zone, by the way. There we go. So we got flesh spawners. So in this particular case, we're going to go ahead and we're going to convert the flesh spawners first. And we're going to force the flesh spawners to fight each other and their own brood. And by doing this, we can prevent them from creating babies. And that's basically the entire goal here, is we don't want them to create more children. Um, and by converting them, they can no longer do this. Um, also, similarly to the conversion of the spawners, is another place that you can potentially use conversion to your advantage, which is if you are inside of an area where the monsters heal. So, for instance, when you are in Travancall, uh, there's actually quite a few places where these monsters exist, is uh, basically any monster that can heal other monsters. 
Um, so, for instance, as you can see right here, we have Uzvex. Uzvex can definitely heal. Um, in this particular case, we cannot ca attack, convert him directly, but what we can do is we can convert his minions around him, and we can use his minions to attack him directly. And then once he is dead, then we can go through the process of killing, obviously, all of the minions, uh, now that we no longer have to worry about the healing. The same is true for the Travancall Council. So the Travancall Council all have the ability to heal uh, each other. Um, now you cannot convert the elite or the unique members essentially of the Travancall Council, but you can however convert each individual non elite member. And when you're fighting Trav Council, there's definitely quite a few of them. Now by converting them, <laughs> I killed myself. So this is something uh, that I did want to show you guys, and I'm glad that it happened because it's a pretty funny thing. So when you convert a monster, for a brief period of time after the monster actually is deconverted, because of the lag time or the delay in the application of auras, um, the aura can actually up stay applied to a monster for several seconds, up to two seconds, I believe, after the monster has been deconverted. This has to do with the way that auras are converted and the way that they basically just stay on you even after the paladin is no longer near. You can see this by simply me walking near this guy and then running away, and you'll see that even after I run away out of range, he still has the conviction aura underneath his feet for about two seconds until it disappears. Um, and this is because, of course, you know, um, it causes a problem. Now, when you're converting monsters and you're utilizing thorns to your advantage, it does actually cause a little bit of an issue where if you attack the monster too quickly after they've deconverted, they may still have their thorns active, and in the process, you accidentally murder yourself, which is what you literally just saw me do. I've shown that before, by the way. Um, now, the Traffic Call Council can also be stopped uh, from healing as well. So, um, stopping... Uh, healing slash spawning slash resurrection. Uh, so these are all very nice things to do, is being able to stop these things from happening is great, right? So if I'm down here and I'm fighting the Travis Cole Council, which is, let's go fight the council real quick, and I will endeavor not to kill myself again. But I did uh, I did want to actually show you that, so I'm glad that it happened. Now, the uh, Trav Council is obviously comprised of elite members, and it's also comprised of the non-elite members. So generally what you want to do is you want to convert the non-elite members, um, and what this will do is it will prevent the non-elite members from healing the elite members. Um, and once you do this, then you just simply work on the elite members um, because now they will no longer be receiving the heals from all of their counterparts. Um, at which point, once all the elite members are dead, then you can then work on the non-elite members and get them all killed as well, um, which isn't really all that difficult to do. Um, the non-elite members are actually kind of worthless without their elite counterparts. And, of course, I got all these juvies down here. Beautiful, beautiful juvies. Um, I'm trying to think of anything else I can tell you when it comes to conversion, and there's just so many fun little things when it comes to conversion in terms of like how it puts the damage out. Um, an interesting one that, that you can use to your advantage also, which is kind of fun, is getting the monsters cursed. So when a monster is cursed, the curse actually does not go away um, if the monster deconverts. So um, as a very interesting technique that can actually be used to your advantage, like for instance when you're in Chaos Sanctuary and the monsters are all converting everything or cursing everything on a d like a freaking, you know, like every single time they get an opening pretty much, um, you can of course utilize this to your advantage in Chaos Sanctuary to cause the monsters to be cursed. Um, and uh, let's see if I can show you this really quickly. Now, um, it is important to note that the uh, Oblivion Knights are not cursable, or are not um, uh, AI controllable, I guess would be the term, sorry, AI controllable. Anything that is considered an AI controlling curse or ability um, does not affect the Oblivion Knights, uh, which means that you cannot actually convert the Oblivion Knights, which is fine because we're going to utilize the Oblivion Knights to give us free curses. Um, and you might be wondering how we can do this. Well, basically, we're just going to force the Oblivion Knights to do the curse 
that we want them to do, which is uh, Decrepify. Um, and you can force the Oblivion Knights to do Decrepify just by simply going within melee range. It is a uh, pre-programmed AI uh, function of the Oblivion Knights to cause them to use Decrepify whenever you enter melee range. So for instance, if I convert a bunch of monsters real quick, uh, we're going to go ahead and convert a nice little pack here. Um, and then I am going to run into melee range of the monster, um, and he is going to immediately curse me with Decrepify, as you can see. And because he cursed me to Decrepify, the pack also got cursed with Decrepify. And now that I have the entire pack running here, I'm just going to go ahead and convert as many as I can. You can also use this to remove Amplify damage from yourself, as you can see like I just did, by mo moving up to any of the Oblivion Knights. Obviously, Amplify damage is the worst of the two curses between Decrepify and Amplify damage, because number one, Decrepify only lasts a few seconds, and number two, Amplify damage causes a lot more damage in general. So in this way, you can actually utilize conversion to your advantage to get the benefit of essentially the curses that are being used. So in this particular example, we're going to go ahead and convert a bunch of monsters, um, and then I'm going to deliberately walk within range of the Oblivion Knight. As you can see, he very predictably and very realistically used Decrepify on all the monsters nearby. Um, which stayed on them the entire time, which is very nice. You can also use this to your advantage in other ways by having them cast Amplify Damage, Lower Res, and um, like a Weaken 2. But they do that more randomly, which is a little less um, easy to predict. Uh, so, you know, for instance, when you have your little, your little conversion pack here um, and you have your Oblivion Knight in the background um, and they use their general curse on you, like whichever one they use. This time it looks like they used Life Tap. Um, so Life Tap isn't really a one that we want, so we're just going to approach the Oblivion Knight and get the Decrepify curse on us. And um, Decrepify wears off really quickly, so once Decrepify is gone, now we have no curse on us. It's just a really easy way that you can remove curses from yourself and also use that to your advantage with the con conversion aura uh, to cause the monsters to get cursed as well. So we just do like a quick run toward the monster, pretend like we're doing something, and as you can see, he immediately decrepified us and any money monster that was near us. Uh, Amplify Damage, they also cast, and it has a much larger radius if you want to wait for that one. That one does take a little bit longer. Um, another added benefit of conversion, and uh, let me consult my sheet here, because I might be running out of, uh, of things here to talk to about. Uh, one of the added benefits of conversion is the ability to prevent damage. Um, and what I mean by prevent damage is not exactly tanking, but sort of just using them to take damage away from you in such a way. Um, one of the clearest ways I can show this is uh, by going and fighting dolls. So you might uh, have uh, nightmares from dolls. Uh, dolls are definitely not the easiest monsters in the game to, to love. They definitely like to run up to you and explode and try to kill you and such. Um, so one of the easiest things that you can potentially do with dolls is you can just simply convert one or two of them um, to go into the pack to remove damage from yourself so that they don't explode near you. Um, in this particular case, let's see if we can find some dollies down here. It looks like we got cadavers. Uh, we did not end up with dolls. Okay. So let me go ahead and make number two. Uh, there's only three types of monsters in an area, and uh, because the number of monsters in that area had already been discovered, obviously we saw Urdars, we saw the um, zombies, and we saw the ghoul lords, so there are no dolls down there. So that was actually a, a nice Durance of 8 level 2 with no dollies. Won't get so lucky every single time. It's usually almost always dolls down here. Erdars, Ghoul Lords, and uh, no dollies, no dollies. Hmm. Nope, zombies again. So here's an interesting example that we can use, um, which is the ranged or spellcaster monsters. So in this particular case, I'm going to specifically convert these Ghoul Lords, which have obviously Meteor Aura. I'm utilizing um, Conviction Aura, and the Conviction Aura is going to amplify the amount of damage that they're putting out pretty dramatically. Um, so they actually become surprisingly useful under the negative resistance of the Conviction Aura. So in this particular case, we're just going to utilize the Ghoul Lords to dish out massive amounts of damage for us. And it actually works out surprisingly well. Um, obviously, we can do damage ourselves, but this is about 
how do you use conviction to your benefit in various ways to dish out massive amounts of damage to the enemy and um, it actually works surprisingly well um, of course we still don't have dolls uh, finding dolls is is usually not difficult for <laughs> it is usually not difficult to find dolls down there that is the I had two separate runs today with no dolls. Sometimes I would try to find a no doll during of hate, and I would never find a no doll during of hate. It's hilarious. And we got Erdars again. And there we go. So we have dolls. Um, so what you want to do with the dolls is just really simple. You just convert one or two of the dolls, um, uh, preferably two. Um, but when you convert them, you'll notice that they just kind of like have this problem where they just stand there. Um, for some reason or another, when it comes to conversion and the dolls, it seems to affect their AI very oddly. Um, I think it's because they're designed very specifically to kill players. Um, and once they are converted, it kind of messes with their their modus operandi and they sometimes just bug out and they just stand there and as you can see he's just he's just standing there he did in fact kill the other doll for me which was very nice but generally when it comes to the dolls converting one of the dolls into the pack the dolls are so voracious that they will usually end up going and fighting each other um, as soon as you convert one or two of the dolls and you can just simply let them kill each other relatively easily uh, obviously don't stand near them as they kill each other because that would definitely be bad, and you'd probably get caught in the explosions. Um, getting out of danger. So this is a um, kind of an important one, and getting out of danger is definitely something that conversion is extremely good at. Uh, and I don't think I've talked about getting out of danger yet. So let's assume that you are in a very poor situation. So let's assume that you're just you got absolutely surrounded by as many monsters as you could possibly imagine. And let's go down to um, uh, let's go down here and let's use this as an example because this is a pretty good one. Uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to just like dive into this pack of monsters here um, and probably get our booty cheeks lap. Uh, but let's say that you're in a pack of monsters like this and you end up getting stuck. And of course, these monsters are not strong enough to even like challenge me at this particular point in time. My poor mercenary is just absolutely demolishing them because it's only P1. Um, I think we'll go offline for this so I can do a P8 uh, scenario. So let me show you a P8 scenario of this. So let's assume that you're fighting a big group of monsters. You've got your your game. Uh, you're on like a player's aid or something. Maybe you're playing with all your friends. You end up getting surrounded by a relatively large group of monsters. Um, and the easiest place to show this off, I think, would probably be Canyon of the Magi. Um, when you are surrounded by monsters with conversion, one of the easiest things you could do is just simply convert the monsters around you until you can escape. Um, this allows you to, number one, obviously reduce the amount of incoming damage because the monsters that are converted will not hit you. Um, number two, this also makes it so that in general you're going to be able to get out of the combat because as the monsters are converted they are more likely to find another target to fight as opposed to you so let's pretend i was completely surrounded by monsters and i could get out um, in this particular case i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to spam conversion on basically everything around me in a circle um, and once i spam enough conversions around me you'll notice that the monsters just kind of part uh, like the Red Sea and Moses. Um, and once they part, like the Red Sea and Moses, then you're going to obviously be able to escape combat. So conversion actually works surprisingly well when you are in a dangerous situation where, for instance, you end up getting surrounded and stuck by a large number of monsters because you can use conversion to escape uh, basically any situation that you might be stuck in. So... In, in summary, if we're talking about the use, utility of conversion, the utility of conversion is actually amazing. Um, conversion not only is something that you have to know when to use and when not to use, but it's a tool that is a one-point wonder on the Paladin's Bar. Um, and it's also a one-point wonder on the Assassin's Bar with Mind Blast. Um, you just need to put one point into it, 
And of course, if you're only going up to Zeal, it might be two points. Uh, but if you're going to Fist of the Heavens or something like that, you probably already have a point in it anyway. Um, and with only just one point, you can usually get a sufficient percentage of conversion uh, with your plus to skills and rel other rel relative equipment to get pretty much a good use out of it. Um, and... Um, it has tons of tactical capability within a fight if you know how to use it. Uh, elite Assassination, which is converting all the elite minions to kill the elite. Uh, because basically all you're going to do here is you're just going to convert all the elite minions and they're going to go after the elite because that's the only monster left on the battlefield. They're all going to attack the elite. You're also going to attack the elite. And then the elite dies. And once the elite is dead, the aura and the threat of the elite is gone and you can focus on the minions. Um, when you convert, make sure that you don't convert all the monsters at once because you want to you don't want all the monsters to deconvert at the same time basically perform <laughs> causing yourself to get surrounded instantaneously which could potentially end in your death um, if you stagger convert you protect from the mass danger of deconverting and you also allow the monsters to continually fight each other as they deconvert in other words if you count about four seconds in between each deconversion you can have each monster deconvert fighting the other monsters and as they fight the other monsters will potentially kill them and move on very nicely um, the danger um, of uh, being stuck in a large pack of monsters is completely muted by the ability to convert. So basically, if you get stuck in a large pack of monsters, you can just simply use conversion to convert some of the monsters away from you, distracting them and allowing you to escape whatever situation you end up getting stuck in. And even if you cannot get out of the situation by converting all of the monsters around you in a circle, you can at least make yourself a safe area inside of the horribleness of what's going on um, where you might have time to save an exit, uh, maybe use some potions, maybe use a town portal and escape that way. There's definitely a myriad of ways that you can potentially escape once you have an army essentially in front of you to be able to block or take the damage for you. Um, creating a tank that is not level dependent. Um, so basically whenever you go into a fight, um, you have essentially a free tank that you can use at your disposal. So if you go down to say like the River of Flame, and you're trying to fight Hephaesto or something like that. You go into a fight, and uh, we have... There you go. There's my tank right there. And so now we have a monster that's going to function as our tank so that we can potentially focus on dishing out damage to the targets around us. And it actually works surprisingly well to have uh, one or two tanks, you know, basically backing us up. Um, there are some monsters in the game that cannot be converted which is definitely, you know, obviously not as useful. But uh, the ability to make a tank, even when you're a relatively low-level character in a high-level area, is super-duper effective. Um, on top of this, we also have the ability to re basically um, retrieve our body um, while naked. So uh, we can very easily retrieve our body while we're naked this way uh, just by simply converting things. And I demonstrated that earlier by simply taking off my weapon and punching things. And as you can you could see, they still ended up being converted. Um, you can kill yourself on thorns, which is something that you do have to watch out for um, <laughs> because of the way that the... Um, the aura uh, applies at a, a various cycling point. It's only a very brief period of time, and usually if you're a little bit cognizant of what's going on, you can prevent it. Uh, but for the most part, uh, you know, it's not really too big of a deal. If you focus on the elites mainly instead of the regular monsters when you're doing the conversion, the uh, Thorns aura never goes onto the elite, obviously, and you don't have to worry about that kind of stuff. It really only comes into play if you're focusing on the converted monsters as opposed to focusing on the threats, which is the champions, the elites, the bosses, etc. Um, you basically, you kill the regular monsters later. Um, converting the ranged and spellcasters um, definitely helps a lot because then the melees go and attack them and take them out. Um, and uh, it, it, it definitely helps to convert them first as opposed to last. Um, stopping healing and spawning and resurrection, which is super powerful. Um, even at early levels when you might have trouble with the spamming of resurrection and things like that, or you might have trouble killing the spawners, especially the hell, the, uh, the, the little evil little flesh spawners. I think those are my, my uh, most hated ones there. The maggots aren't too bad. The shamans are okay. But the flesh spawners, I think, are the worst. And when you convert the flesh spawners, they just simply stop doing anything. I'm using it to prevent damage to you entirely. Um, in many cases, you might just simply convert just simply so you can get by a pack of monsters. Like, for instance, if you're running through, I don't know, like, say, Crystalline Passage, 
and maybe you just don't want to fight monsters, but you know that they're going to be chasing you no matter what you do. Um, one of the easiest things that you can do is just simply convert one monster and then just run by them. Um, this allows you to obviously create a situation where there is a monster to be fought, um, and of course this means that the monsters are going to pay no attention to you as you run by them, which allows you to just simply prevent damage entirely. Um, and you can do this in a myriad of ways using dolls um, and all sorts. Um, obviously, Blood Lords are extremely good at attacking as conversions. So there's also a certain tactical awareness of what makes a good convert and what doesn't make a good convert. Um, similarly to the way that the Necromancer works, you'll find that certain monsters in the game are better converts than others. Zombies are absolutely terrible converts because, well, they just kind of wander around and do stupid things. Uh, the Hawks are terrible converts and so forth and so on. Whereas Erdars make absolutely excellent converts and spear cats and uh, fire archer arrows and things like that. Like, in general, it's pretty much identical to the way that you would play a necromancer in choosing which ones that you would revive and which ones you wouldn't, except you're prioritizing it based on essentially, like, which ones do you think are going to be the most effective in that particular combat? Um, another interesting thing about conversion, and it's something that I've noticed as I've played along, is that converted monsters often die after deconversion. Um, and I'm not exactly sure why this is. In fact, I was going to take a look on uh, Amazon Basin and see if there was anything written about this. But um, I have noticed that monsters that deconvert, um, even when they are kind of like at full health, sometimes when they deconvert, they end up kind of like just being really low on health or almost instantly dying upon deconversion. And I'm not exactly sure why that is. Um, and no, uh, there's not really anything on here about that. Huh. Yeah, there's nothing really about that. But I've seen it happen many, many times, is that when the monster deconverts, and let's go ahead and convert a couple more here. Um, just to show off. So let's take a look at this guy right here. So you notice that he's at full health right now, um, according to his panel. And um, when he deconverts, it looks like he's still sitting at full. So maybe not that one in particular. I'm not exactly sure what causes it. In fact, it happens a lot, I notice, when I'm doing the conversions. And it's not every single time. But I have noticed that when the monsters deconvert, a lot of the times they will be near death or very close to death, and then they'll just simply instantly die. Um, maybe it would work better not on Player's 8. It might have something to do with... Let's pull up uh, to do a quick game real quick. A quick game real quick. That's right. So let's go ahead and do an uh, elite assassination here. So nothing too fancy. We're just going to do a little elite assassination. And there we go. Now the elite is down. Now we're going to wait a second, and we're going to wait for them to deconvert. And what you'll see is, is that a lot of these times when they deconvert, it's almost instant death for the most part. Like that one particularly died. These are, are the only ones that survived, basically. Um, and as you can see, they still ended up dying relatively quickly anyway. It's it's something that's kind of strange about the way that the conversion process works, and I think it has something to do with their level being twisted and messed around with when they're converted. Um, I'm not exactly sure how to explain it to you other than to pull up the Amazon Basin page. So I'll pull up the Amazon Basin page and show you the calculation on conversion and how it converts the monster. Um, so this is the Amazon Basin page and it says when sea level is greater than M level, sea level is used to calculate and convert defense, attack rating, and damage, but life is still calculated using the monster level. Uh, when sea level is greater than M level, M level continues to be used to calculate at all level adjusted stats. Um, they also obviously get all of the auras uh, from you as well, as you can see here. Um, while converted, monsters are affected by friendly buffs and auras, hostile debuffs and auras. Any buff 
and debuff poison damage or open wounds that is not expired before conversion will remain afterwards. A monster can be cursed with amplified damage before conversion to maximize the return by thorns. Um, this also means that monsters that aren't capable of healing, as you can see here, healing or resurrecting, uh, other converts will not do so. So it's very interesting. And um, there's a lot of fun things that you can definitely do with the way that the conversion works. Um, I've been playing around with this, and honestly, I am a convert. Um, I am definitely a convert. I uh, originally went into my first conversion character um, and with the idea that I was just going to be playing a meme character that wasn't even particularly very useful. Um, and as I played around with conversion, as I used it, as I tried to get more tactically minded with the function of it and understand the ability better, I started to realize that conversion actually has some pretty sick usefulness and quite honestly is probably an S tier skill in disguise. It really comes down to the player itself utilizing the skill properly and if you don't utilize the skill properly then of course it's going to suck if you're just spamming conversion willy-nilly if you're using it at the wrong times when you're trying to exp um, if you're not using it to your advantage instead you're using it to your disadvantage then obviously it can be very poor ability um you know if you're in a eight man exp group and everybody's just running through monsters like they don't exist obviously that is not a good time for conversion but when you're in a lower level group and people are struggling to tank you know cows for instance and your sorceress is running around like a crackhead trying to stay away from the cows in that particular situation a couple converted cows can actually come in extremely handy to tank to allow your spellcasters to sit in the back relatively unmolested and dish out damage and what it really comes down to is if you understand and know how to use conversion properly, it is literally an S tier skill. If you do not know how to use a conversion properly and you do not use it to your advantage, then it is an F tier skill at best. Uh, in fact, it would be even worse than that. I would even consider it to be sabotage <laughs> under certain degrees because I have literally seen the conversion skill used so poorly that uh, it, it literally slows down the entire EXP run and pisses off people to the point where they leave. Anyway, as always, I do appreciate you guys and gals watching my videos, even when I'm just ranting for 41 minutes on the conversion ability being an S tier skill. Tell me what you think about conversion. Um, are you impressed with some of the ways that I was able to use conversion to my benefit? Did you not think about these particular things? Or had you already thought about all of them? Um, or maybe is there something in particular that I had not thought about when it comes to the ability of conversion? Let me know down in the comments. And as always, be sure to hit that like button and the subscribe button, and keep watching.